Hi, uh, welcome. My name is Flore Cruz Serba, Director of Community Outreach, and today we have Dr. Harvey Rainville. How are you, Doc? I'm fantastic. Thank you very much for inviting me. Good, to this. good. Just so you know, I'm keeping my mask on so Dr. Harvey, I'm sorry, Dr. Rainville can speak more freely, and that way you understand what he's saying. We always make sure that we have some social distancing when we do these events. So thank you so much. Of course. Um, today we're going to talk about hernias. Yeah, one of my favorite topics. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, I know from just being out in the community, there's always questions about hernias. Where do they come from? What is a hernia? Sure. You know, uh, hernia is actually a, a more common than I think most people uh, think of. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of people are out there walking around with hernias, and they've... You know, when they finally make it to my office, and I ask them, I say, you know, why? Why you never gotten this taken care of? And they say, well, it doesn't bother me. It hasn't been bothering me until now. Um, and it's funny because a lot of those patients have just gotten lucky, you know, because hernias, you know, they, they can be potentially dangerous. Um, and so usually I recommend to people, if, if they suspect they may have one, they should get it looked at by somebody and, uh, and not wait for it to start causing problems. What is it? It's a great question. Um, and I think there's a lot of misconception about hernias. You know, a lot of times when I see patients, they ask me, can you remove my hernia? And um, it's the idea that, that something is there. So it's actually, rather than something there, it's kind of you're missing something. There's actually kind of a defect or a hole mm -hmm. in your musculature. So your, your muscles and your abdominal wall tend to hold in all the good stuff on the inside, right? It holds all the guts in there. And if there is a, an opening somewhere, now you're given these organs a place to go. And uh, throughout our day, every day, we're always bearing down. You're picking something up, you're mm -hmm. coughing, you're sneezing, you're laughing, you're having a bowel movement, you're bearing down and you're increasing that pressure inside your abdomen. And if there is a defect somewhere or, or an opening or a weakness in that muscle layer, uh, things tend to pop out and that's what a hernia is. So that's why a lot of times people will say, you know, I saw it pop out and it just disappeared. Well, that's exactly what happened pressure increased and you were laughing or you were pushing it popped out and then once that pressure decreased it went back in but that just letting you know that there's a weakness there um, and that that is what a hernia is. Oh, gosh so um, is it more common women versus men? So it is so in men it is more common and also depends on the type of hernia but overall men more commonly develop hernias than women and that's for a variety of reasons some of it is the anatomical uh, and some of it is the type of work that uncommon for men that in uh, in professions where they do a lot of heavy lifting for example movers construction workers things like that they can develop hernias at a higher rate than other people in in more sedentary jobs and you said types so is there different types of hernias there's lots of different types of hernias uh, most common types of hernias are going to be umbilical hernias which is a hernia right through the belly button um, this can happen in young kids. They can be born with it. A lot of adults are, that are born with it, but it's not noticeable until they get older because it kind of slowly grows over time. Um, I think a lot of people that think they just have an Audi belly button. I'm it, just going to ask you. Yeah, <laughs> it is actually, it's actually a belly button hernia, um, and those usually kind of grow slowly over time. Uh, a lot of women will notice this for the first time when they get pregnant. They never knew they had a belly button hernia until they got pregnant, mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden it popped into an Audi. And the reason for that is because they had a small defect there. They had a small hernia, and the pressure caused it to pop out. Um, but most of those patients, yeah, I would recommend after they deliver and, and they're recovered that they should get the hernia taken care of. So there's different sizes? Uh, yes, different sizes and different locations where they occur. So I was mentioning uh, umbilical hernia. That's mm -hmm. one of the most common. Another very common area to get a, a hernia is in the groin. So uh, in your groins, there are natural defects there uh, anatomically, and if you're doing things consistently where you're lifting a lot of weight or you're having a lot of pressure there, you, those natural openings can dilate mm -hmm. uh, and allow contents to start coming out. And I see all different sizes and shapes of hernias. I, I always appreciate it when somebody comes in and they just found that hernia rather than somebody maybe waiting, you know, wow. four or five years and now that hernia is, you know, we see one's the size of a cantaloupe. You know, uh, it makes it a little tougher to fix, but nothing that's not uh, not repairable. So what are some of the um, treatments for that then, at that point? So depending on the type of hernia, the approach may be different. The majority of hernias are repaired nowadays uh, via a minimally invasive approach. So either laparoscopically or robotically. And what that means is you can repair these through 
sub-centimeter incisions, meaning incisions that are smaller than a centimeter. Typically, most hernias can be repaired through two to three incisions that are about half a centimeter each. Um, the procedures typically take anywhere from half an hour to an hour. Mm -hmm. And in most cases, it is a same day operation, meaning you would come in, you'd have surgery, and you go home the same day. Uh, recovery is very quick. Um, for most patients, you're able to ambulate, meaning you're able to walk around and do a lot of your normal activity within a few days. Uh, the big restriction would be you know, heavy lifting. So heavy lifting exercise would need to wait uh, on average, probably about three to four weeks. Um, so it's something, you know, typically you would need to plan around, especially if you have a job that requires heavy lifting. Correct, correct. Yeah. Um, do they cause back pain? So they can cause a lot of different types of symptoms depending mm -hmm. on the type of hernia. Back pain would probably not be a common symptom. Um, they can cause discomfort. So if you see a bulging and you have discomfort around that bulge or the hernia, that's kind of an ominous sign, and you should probably get in to see somebody sooner than later. Mm -hmm. um, other things they can cause is they can cause constipation or nausea and vomiting. And, and if that's happening when that hernia is out, that's a sign that there may be intestine inside of that hernia. Mm -hmm. So one of the big risks of hernias is if you incarcerate or strangulate that hernia, meaning you had an organ pop into that hernia, and now it's too tight, so the blood supply is cut off. So a lot of times you'll hear a story of somebody's hernia that popped out and they couldn't push it back in. And now you're talking about a very dangerous situation where minutes matter because the blood supply to whatever is now popped out into that hernia is cut off. So you're talking about this gangrene essentially setting in and things like that. So so that would be a surgical emergency. And then anybody that has that happen should get you know to an emergency room immediately. Um, and so that's that's why I implore people, you know, when you when you find a hernia, you got to see somebody because it's kind of like a time bomb. You never know when it's going to go off, but at any point it can happen. And I've met the people who say, "Oh, I know I have a hernia. I'm just going to let it be. It's not bothering me." Yes. So what you're saying is pretty much you have it. Make sure that your physician can make that decision. Exactly. Yes. At least get it evaluated so you're at least in the process of knowing whether or not this is something that is dangerous. At least you have it, uh, you know, in your mind that you, you're, you need to get it fixed. But it's there, and up to the doctor to decide. Correct. Is um, is hernia something that we inherit from our family history? Is there a family history? So that, that's a great Risk? question. There, it, it can happen in two different ways. Um, a lot of hernias are what we call congenital. So you are born with a small defect that over the course of your life kind of slowly grows until you may be noticeable. So you may have a small hernia there that's been there for years and it doesn't become noticeable until it's grown to a certain size. Um, so yes, a lot of uh, types of hernias we are born with. Uh, there are also types of hernias that you can develop. Like I mentioned with uh, people who have jobs that they, they lift mm -hmm. large amounts of weight, you can create a hernia. So you can actually create a hernia in the weakest part of your abdominal wall. Um, and so we see that as well. Oh, so yeah. Talk about a risk of when your work. Experience. And for sure, yes. Um, can a hernia cause weight gain? Can a hernia cause weight gain? That was one question. Gosh, I feel like everything can, everything can cause weight gain if it's uh, <laughs> yeah. in the right, that, in the right situation, right? right? Um, yeah, I guess if, you, if it's limiting your activity, because a lot of people you know, will tell me, they say, gosh, you know, I'm not playing golf anymore, I'm not doing certain activities because it bothers me. I see some people come in, they're having a hard time just walking around mm -hmm. because of how bad that hernia is bothering them. And so in those situations where it's limiting your activity, then absolutely it could cause you, mm -hmm. cause you to gain weight. Okay. Yes. Um, so anyone can come and see a surgeon like yourself. I mean, it's Correct. not something that you need to go to your primary care physician. As much as we always encourage for you to see your primary care physician, it's just something that you can just kind of inquire and make an appointment to see a surgeon. Absolutely, and I would say, you know, usually going to your primary care physician is a good place to start because they're very familiar with uh, with uh, diagnosing hernias and, um, you know, they should be able to diagnose most of them and then they'll refer you to a surgeon. Mm -hmm. um, and if they're not, if they're unsure, I get lots of patients that their primary doc was not 100% sure and they sent them there for a consultation. And sometimes it is and sometimes it's not a hernia. Um, most of the time you can diagnose it on clinical exam. Uh, so just by the examination, you don't really need any additional testing most of the time. Uh, occasionally, if it's a more complex hernia or if it's not as clear, uh, maybe for the, because of the patient's body habits, we can't make 100% uh, confirmation that a hernia is there. CT scans are excellent tests. So if you go for a CT scan, they're very, very accurate at diagnosing hernias. And they can tell you a lot about the hernia. They can tell you what's sitting inside of it, the size of it, um, the anatomy sitting around it. So. 
Uh, a lot of times I will order uh, CT scans for my patients uh, just to kind of get a better sense of the hernia. Right, right. Uh, so this is a perfect time to ask questions. Um, we're here and I believe some came through already. So I'll take that. Uh, can a hernia reoccur after surgery? So yes, so that's you know great question. That's one of the things us surgeons talk about the most with uh, hernia repair. So the way we fix hernias now has been a, a long process as far as getting to our understanding of the best way to repair these. And the techniques we use now are designed to reduce the likelihood that hernia is gonna come back. Um, and with the techniques we use now, meaning sometimes with mesh and sutures and doing it robotically or laparoscopically, uh, Overall, there's about a 1% to 2% uh, likelihood that a hernia will come back over the course of your lifetime, which is, is, is actually really good compared to the results we used to have you know, 20 years ago where it was you know, acceptable to have 10, 15% recurrence rates over the lifetime. Now we're down close to around 1% or 2%. And then a lot of stuff comes into play. So you gotta think about a lot of other factors. For example, some people may have healing issues. Uh, obviously, people who may have um, poorly controlled blood sugars, they're smokers, they're gonna have a higher risk of, uh, of having a recurrence. Um, but everything with the, the procedure is designed around fixing that hernia and making sure it doesn't come back. But it's not 100%. Is there any uh, chronic diseases that would uh, uh, put you at higher risk, diabetes? Absolutely, yeah, diabetes would definitely be one if you have any connective tissue uh, disorders, um, autoimmune disorders, mm -hmm. uh, those types of things. You know, if you're on steroids, those types of things can impair healing and and increase your chances of recurrence. Also, you know, patients with a, a higher BMI, so patients that are obese or morbidly obese, are gonna have a little bit higher of a, uh, of a recurrence rate than other individuals. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's interesting when someone asked, what made you decide to become a surgeon? It's actually a very, <laughs> I thought that was a very interesting. interesting question. You know what, and I gotta give credit to uh, probably my mother for that. I, I don't know if I ever decided to become a doctor more than she decided that I was going to become a doctor. And so she kind of just planted this seed in my head at a very young age. And so whenever I got asked what I wanted to be, I would just regurgitate doctor until I guess I kind of convinced myself that that's what it, and, uh, but now looking back, it was, I, I think I got to give her, uh, her the credit for that. Um, my mom made me do it. My right? mom made me do it. That's right. And, and you're very grateful for that. Sure. Yes, no, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. Uh, so if we don't have any other questions, please always feel free to reach out through our website. Uh, there's different um, topics that you can find. There is also YouTube as well. Absolutely. And so if you need to uh, look back and maybe consider hearing this again, feel free. Um, Dr. Arabia, how do we reach out to you? Yeah, you can either you contact my office directly or if you want to email me with questions, I'm, I'm happy to respond to you. Sometimes I'm, I might not respond to you until nine o'clock at night, but uh, I promise I'll get back to you. And it's just hrainville at nybg.com. Uh, and our office number is 973-744-8585. And I'm sure now that our world is somewhat opening a bit, uh, most of our programs are now gonna be uh, hybrid, um, especially this summer. So I'm sure we would love to have you do a program and that people That'd are gonna have a chance to ask more questions. We're more than so, happy to. Perfect, so if there's, no one has any questions, Again, thank you for joining us and be well.